Right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Commuter Services and Metro Transit's presentation on Metro Orange Line project updates. We are delighted you are here. I am Kate Meredith, Vice President at Commuter Services. The high quality, high frequency transit coming to 35W is exciting and right around the corner. Commuter Services and the 494 Corridor Commission have long advocated for high quality, high frequency transit to connect people to jobs. The Orange Line is a cornerstone to the backbone of the future transit network being built. Before I introduce John Dillery and Juan Ranghal, I have a few notes. Please use the Q&A feature to ask questions at any time during the presentation. We will uh, respond to questions after both John and Juan have presented. Then I will provide some updates on commuter services and we'll have another chance for questions. Then we'll wrap up. We are recording today's presentation and we'll post it on Commuter Services YouTube channel. We'll also send a link to the recording and the slide deck um, to all registrants today. And now we are pleased to welcome our presenters, John Dillery and Juan Reinhau from Metro Transit. John Dillery is a senior planner at Metro Transit. He lives in South Minneapolis and rides transit almost exclusively. John has been planner for the South Metro region for over 20 years. Welcome, John. And Juan Reinhal has served as a Metro Transit outreach coordinator for five years. He's worked on light rail, bus rapid transit, and local bus service projects. Juan lives in South Minneapolis, but he still considers St. Paul home. So welcome. Um, John and Juan, and you can start sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kate. Happy to be here with you. Um, I'd like to preview our discussion topics here. Um, we'll be, I'll be sharing a brief background of what the Orange Line is and where we are construction-wise with this project um, before handing it off to John, who will uh, describe the Connecting Bus Studies concept plan of proposed changes to uh, routes in the South Metro. Um, he'll also describe the equity analysis of the connecting bus study and then I'll get into the next steps for the project and our timeline. Following this presentation segment, uh, be happy to, John and I will be happy to field your uh, questions here. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, what is the Orange Line? The Metro Orange Line is a highway bus rapid transit project that will connect Minneapolis Richfield, Bloomington, and Burnsville along I-35W with fast, frequent service every day. Uh, the route is 17 miles long with 12 stations that will be served every 10 minutes during rush hour and every 15 minutes during non-rush hour. Uh, the predecessor to the Orange Line is the Route 535, which the, Orange Line, which the Orange Line will replace, as well as Route 597. Um, the Orange Line will provide service in both directions of I-35W every day, which will support reverse commuters and the 50,000 jobs and 80,000 residents outside of downtown Minneapolis. Um, on the map to your right, uh, the stations which are under construction are highlighted in the orange circles, generally moving from south to north. We have Burnsville Heart of the City Station, 35W and Burnsville Parkway Station, proceeding north on 35W to 98th Street Station, adjacent to the current South Bloomington Transit Center, before proceeding north to Knox Avenue and American Boulevard Station near the South Town area, then going north underneath 494 in a new tunnel to Knox Avenue and 76th Street Station near the Best Buy headquarters, uh, proceeding north to station at 66th Street, and then onwards to the existing station at 46th Street and 35W, and then towards the new Lake Street Station before continuing into downtown Minneapolis on a bus only ramp to serve the stations in the Marquette and Second Avenue transit corridor. Um, so construction is well underway and we are planning to uh, begin passenger service in late 2021. And I'll, uh, in the next slides here, describe the three construction packages that compose the Orange Line. So uh, first package here is the Knox Avenue Transit Way, which is being built under I-494, just west of 35W. This bus only tunnel will improve the speed of Orange Line service between 
the station at Knox and American and the station at Knox and 76th Street. Currently, the Route 535 takes a winding route along Penn Avenue and gets caught up in traffic lights occasionally. Um, so construction wise, um, in 2020, our contractors completed the northern half of the tunnel. Um, in this aerial view, you can see the I-494 traffic is shifted onto that completed section of the tunnel. And this year in 2021, we will complete the southern half of this tunnel um, in that excavated area towards the bottom of that aerial photo. On the right image is a rendering of the final condition of the transitway um, as the as it jogs along Knox, I'm sorry, Lucky's 13s before connecting to Knox Avenue stations. And to note there is a, a trail as well on the side of this tunnel for pedestrian and bicycle use. Um, so that is one of the package that is currently under construction. Um, other elements of the orange line are being built with MnDOT's 35W at 94 project, including the I-35W and Lake Street station. Uh, this would be a significant upgrade to the previous bus stop that was basically on the shoulder of the freeway. Um, this two-story facility will allow customers to board the orange line and 35W express routes on the freeway level and provide easy connections to Lake Street, local bus routes, and the Midtown Greenway at the street level. On the left, you see some uh, recent photos of construction of the freeway level and at the Lake Street level. And on the right are the final condition renderings for the station. Other elements um, that will serve the orange line in this MnDOT project are upgrades to MinPass lanes and a 12th Street ramp, which will allow a seamless and reliable connection from 35W to the transit only lanes in downtown Minneapolis. Um, our th the remaining Orange Line stations are being built in a third contract. Um, the, it, the, the image we have here on the left is the I-35W and 98th Street uh, station under construction. This is adjacent to the current South Bloomington Transit Center. Um, and on the right is the final condition of this station. Uh, Orange Line stations will share a lot of features similar to light rail station platforms, including lighting, heating, ticket vending machines, real-time bus arrival information, emergency telephones, cameras, bike parking. So um, this spring, the, our contractors will uh, begin to erect the shelters and add more of these amenities uh, before you know, we start the service late this year. So Orange Line construction is well underway and Metro Transit has been reviewing our routes in the South Metro so we can improve service in the area and provide easy connections to the Orange Line. Um, and with that kind of preview, I will ask John Dillery, my colleague in service development at Metro Transit to describe more of these changes from the Connecting Bus Studies concept plan. So John, I will hand it off to you here. Thank you, Juan, Kate. Uh, we have some goals that we must adhere to to ensure that all transit service is successful and the Orange Line is well supported and it's successful. We know that we will make sure that we must make sure the Orange Line connects with the many jobs and residents in the corridor, which you see defined by the dark red line, uh, downtown Minneapolis at the top of the map, Highway 169 on the far left, uh, the Minnesota River at the south, and the Mississippi River on the east. So you get into the airport on the east, and through Edina, Richfield, and Bloomington are the suburbs that we're serving in the south. The study area, this boundary is our study area, does not include any community south of the Minnesota River, even though the orange line goes to Burnsville. And that's because Minnesota Valley Transit Authority will do the planning and of course does the operations of the bus service in Burnsville. Uh, they're involved in this process and will be coming forward with some uh, concepts of their own probably mid this year. The uh, important goal too is that we grow our ridership, recover our ridership that has been uh, discouraged by the pandemic, but grow beyond that in an equitable way. We wanna make sure that those who need transit service the most have access to it for their needs. 
including getting to jobs. We always look for an opportunity to simplify bus routes so that there's one route instead of one route with two or three branches because it's a lot simpler and easier for people to learn. Uh, there's some trade-offs for that, but that's always been a goal. Uh, we want to enhance mobility and connectivity, which is just another way of saying, make sure the transfers work, because when you have bus rapid transit with stations every uh, one to two miles apart, there's lots of destinations that uh, are more than walking distance away, and uh, it's all about making good connections with our connecting bus service, and it's crucial to the success of the Orange Line. The Orange Line isn't uh, guaranteed that it'll carry the same riders that the Route 535 carries, because uh, there is a difference in access. The Orange Line has 12 stations end to end, including the two in Burnsville. In our study area, there are 10 stations, and that compares with the Route 535, which as Juan mentioned is being uh, largely replaced by the Orange Line, Route 535 has 80 bus stops from each uh, terminal to each terminal, then in other words, each direction. So the difference between 80 and 10 is the challenge in measurable terms of what we have to do to make sure that people can get where they need to go. And there'll be a lot of necessary transferring to make that work. Uh, the last point is about our existing commuter service. Now, with the pandemic, we've had to suspend a lot of the service because downtown Minneapolis, which is the destination these routes is mainly are, are serving, uh, is uh, pretty much shut down with so many of us working remotely from home. But uh, we are making sure that what we design here works well with the express service that comes back, uh, depending on the market. The dark blue routes shown on the map lastly are the routes that have changes proposed to them in our concept plan to uh, meet these goals. And uh, almost all of them serve an orange line station. There are dark gray routes shown on the map, especially in Minneapolis, the top end of the map. And those are bus routes that'll serve an orange line station, but have no significant service changes proposed as part of the concept plan. Next slide, please. Well, stepping back to the early days of the process in 2019, uh, we thought we were going to have this all ready to go about a year ago, but then the pandemic hit and we put our whole planning process on hold till now. Uh, but we still have time before the Orange Line is supposed to open late this year, so it's working out. Back in 2019, before things got started, we did a lot of surveying. There was uh, more than 500 online surveys returned, and, and including some paper surveys, but the mo uh, majority were online. We did electronic rider alerts, that is, uh, through our channels of uh, customers uh, who normally get rider alerts electronically. We did our normal social media stuff. Um, we have what's called the Connect Newsletter, which uh, we put in information in. That's uh, paper and, well, nowadays, virtual or online. Uh, we had three open houses to talk uh, about what was the orange line and, you know, what we were uh, thinking our goals were. And what we heard was from the attendees and those who responded to surveys is that uh, kind of a pleasant surprise that in 2019, the uh, majority of people had actually heard of the orange line, had some idea of what it was about. The uh, majority of our respondents were riding every day, at least weekdays. Um, not surprisingly, given the corridor and our service, a lot of our respondents said they were riding to work in the peak periods. And then that lists the routes. The routes that are listed here uh, that most people rode in response for some of our higher ridership routes. And there's Route 535 and Route 597 being largely replaced by the Orange Line. Um, most thought the Orange Line would favorably affect their travel. Although there was some key provisos in those responses when you read them. Uh, if the good connections are assured that we can really make sure that uh, if I can't walk from an Orange Line station, there will be a bus that gets to me where I need to go. Uh, and then some of the key destinations people mentioned are listed at the bottom, not surprisingly, Normandale College. And uh, Lindale and Penn Avenue basically refers to Bloomington, Lindale and Penn Avenue. And the 94th Street James Avenue area was mentioned since it's such a key employment area. Suburban employment locations favored uh, notably in responses. Next slide, please. Well, and as I said, you know, COVID, uh, the pandemic has affected things. We um, 
are running about 80% of our service right now uh, that we did back in 2019. And most of that's because there's a, a number of rush hour express routes that are not running right now for the reason I just mentioned earlier. Uh, it's, of course, the difference in ridership patterns and demand. Uh, what we're seeing right now is our peak exists in the afternoon. Our weekdays, uh, the ridership distribution through the day is much like on a Saturday. It builds gradually through the morning. There's no morning peak like we usually had. And numbers just keep growing slowly up through the day and then taper off in the evening. Uh, will that pattern sustain? How long? We really don't know, uh, but are watching it closely. So with these new realities, we focus more on the key routes, as we call them, that need to replace pieces of Route 535, 597 to get the service connections with the Orange Line working. We reviewed those goals that I went through earlier, and they held up. Everything still makes sense. Uh, we're looking for new in feedback and input. So we've had uh, meetings with cities, uh, your group here now, the uh, people at uh, Normandale College, very, Bloomington Public Schools, everybody like that to find out what their plans are post pandemic and uh, to understand uh, what the realities are best we could. The suspended express routes by and large being dealt with as part of the Orange Line Connecting Bus Study Plan, concept plan. They are being dealt with in a separate process where we review the market and requests we're getting. And there'll be a decision made by uh, fall of this year uh, to say this route's coming back and if so, how much service. So thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Well, here's a map that shows our concept plan focused on Edina, Richfield, and Bloomington close up. And uh, we are basically dealing with what we know best and most certainly is our fall 2020 resources, what we have to work with right now. And resources means how many buses, drivers, and uh, hours of service we can provide per day. Of course, we know we're replacing around 535 and 597 now. We have a concept plan that does these things. Access to suburban jobs and schools is largely as good or better than what it's been. We have simplified a couple of routes, uh, notably the 515 in Richfield on 66th Street, the 540 that runs along the north side of I-494. Commuter routes, as I said, still are suspended for now. Now, we're doing something rather unusual with this situation because of our unusual circumstances. Uh, Normally, we just have a concept plan where we say, here it is, folks, what do you think? In this case, we actually have a scenario, uh, A, you might call it, a scenario where we say, here's the resources we know we're sure about right now, a basic opening day plan. And then we have a higher level plan, which is, I'll get into in a moment, which has a few features over and above the basic plan. If we have more resources to invest, and if the market looks like it will support these things. And it, there's, a, there's a route that remains suspended now that is involved in that. That's Route 537, the France Avenue line in Bloomington that goes from Valley West, Normandale College, and on up to Southdale. And as you can see on the map, it, uh, it's off by itself in Western Bloomington. So it, it's providing some unique access, isn't it? Uh, there's some routes that are proposed in the basic plan to run just weekdays that we uh, propose adding weekend service to, notably our new Lindale Avenue route in Bloomington called the 534 and the 542, which is the cross town that runs along the south side of 494 Bloomington. And there's a number of other routes we have improved frequency on uh, during the day to uh, try to grow thing a ridership faster. Next slide, please. Now I'll get into the details, what we call route groups, uh, route by route, uh, specific points that I want to share with you. Basically starting from north to south. Uh, these will be focused on the suburban areas since uh, that's where major changes are proposed. Route 7 and 515, Richfield. Okay, Route 515, the crosstown that runs on 66th Street and has for decades, starts at Southdale and runs east 
and is simplified into one route. Instead of having three branches, all the buses are proposed to go by Cedar Point Commons, which is Cedar and 66th Street, down Richfield Parkway by the apartments and back over to Bloomington Avenue, and then directly over to the Mall of America by the new underpass under Highway 77, 77th Street underpass, 24th Avenue, and to the Mall of America. And uh, everything would be running on uh, the same route. Uh, the underpass under Highway 77 will help make our service a little more direct, but it will not be available late this year. It will not open until late 2022. In the meantime, we'll see, keep using the current routing, which is shown in light purple, 12th Avenue and American Boulevard, and onto the Mall of America. And the schedule works the same anyway. Uh, it's just uh, a little less direct. The branches uh, up to the PA Medical Center, shown in the upper right corner of the map by 54th Street, uh, would not be operating anymore. We would rely instead on Route 7, 34th Avenue, shown in blue, uh, connecting with Route 515 by Cedar Point Commons, the 66th Street, Cedar area. The 7 today runs service in midday and weekends, but in the concept plan, basic or otherwise, all the virtually all the trips run to Cedar Point, 66th Street, rush hour, evening, so that we make, make it much easier for people to get between that part of Minneapolis and Richfield, vice versa. But that doesn't take us directly to the VA Medical Center, and we do have people there, and there is an impact. You'll hear me say impact occasionally, and that's a potential concern. Uh, we had about 25 people in 2019 who worked at VA Medical Center or otherwise were going there on the bus. Uh, on Route 515. The alternative is to take the 515 to the Mall of America on this concept and up to the blue line, Metro Blue Line through the airport up to the VA Medical Center Station and then walk in. Uh, good frequency, good connections are an easy thing to arrange, but it is longer. It's a longer travel time. So we're watching that one closely. The uh, other branch of the 515 is the Longfellow Avenue branch, which is the east frontage road of Highway 77. And that's just a quicker way to get to the Mall of America, but it also is uh, used by about eight people, give or take, who get off right by the word Longfellow, where the Highway 77 symbol is, in a place called Cargo Road, and actually walk the mile into FedEx and UPS, shown here on the map at the airport. So that's the air cargo those are the air cargo travel uh, handling uh, facilities of these places, and they hire a lot of part-time workers and uh, on weekdays. And we're in contact with them specifically to see if we can give them some alternative or if they can work with us to provide something because uh, it's quite an impact for those uh, group of people because we are proposing not to have a Long Pelo Avenue branch anymore. And that's basically the sum total. The one last thing I want to mention is the map says potential high frequency service in yellow highlight. What that's referring to is uh, with our high, higher level investment scenario, the 515 would be upgraded back to a 15 minute frequency or high frequency on weekdays and Saturdays uh, instead of the current 20 minute frequency. And with a 15 minute frequency on the orange line, the connections between the 515 and the orange line would certainly be more convenient if we do that. Uh, that's basically the whole story about that part of Richfield. Next slide, please. Moving along into Bloomington and just kind of going up the numbers, here's the Route 534 and 553. Route 535 today serves destinations along Lindale Avenue. Uh, in the middle of it there, just in the rush hours, but a 94th Street and uh, Lindale all day long. And it also serves destinations near Southtown. Well, the Orange Line has a station at, uh, near Southtown at American and Knox, but not another station until 98th Street, the new name for South Bloomington Transit Center, 98th Street. What about the areas in between? Well, Route 534 would be operating every 30 minutes most of the day, every 20 minutes during the rush hours in our basic plan into the evening and replace that local section of Route 535 with connections uh, at the stations with the Orange Line and other routes. The uh, bus would uh, go back and forth every 30 minutes uh, midday, which is much improved. Uh, there's virtually no off-peak or midday service on Lindale Avenue north of 94th Street, south of 86th Street today. Uh, the city of Bloomington is emphasizing Lindale as, uh, for more development that's uh, 
transit friendly. So that seems to be a good response. The dashed blue line refers to the rush hour trips, which would, on weekdays, which would uh, divert via James Avenue, the Central Bloomington Industrial Park, where we do a ridership and a good concentration of employment. Uh, the main connection would be go to 98th Street Station in the morning, take the 534 to James Avenue to get to work, and then return in the afternoon in the opposite direction back to 98. Uh, with a higher investment scenario, we would like to try running Route 534 on weekends too. The 553 is simply a redesign of a current limited rush hour only service that serves Portland Avenue, Bloomington. And it's all by itself with no other local service to back it up. So we kind of think of it as a special case of coverage. The 553 would be extended across 102nd Street and that's new and Lindale, and it would end at 98th Street Station. And it creates some uh, small opportunities for transfers between other routes in the peaks. Uh, it replaces Route 535 on 102nd Street. Uh, the route would have at least two trips morning and afternoon each. Uh, we'll see maybe more uh, in higher investment scenarios at least. And that completes our Lindale Avenue east of 35W coverage. Now for the next slide, we'll move on to the next areas that need coverage too. This is the 494 area, Richfield on the north half and Bloomington on the south half with I-494 in the middle. Uh, Route 535 today serves destinations that are very key, not just at 76th Street where the Knox Avenue station would be, but also people ride the 535 west over to Penn Avenue, and they also ride east across 76th, 77th Street north of 494 over to Lindale to serve offices there. And, uh, those people won't have Route 535. Will they walk to the station? Maybe, but we shouldn't assume that everyone can or will. So Route 540, our 76th Street Crosstown, 77th Street, will be upgraded back to a 20 minute frequency in the peak periods, rush hours, and every 30 minutes all day long. It'll operate more frequently in evenings and weekends too, but every 30 alternating with 60 minute frequency, at least in our basic plan. The East End will still be at the Mall of America. It'll use the new 77th Street underpass when it's available. The Western end of the route is one variation, just one way of going instead of the current three branches. We'll just always go 74th Street, Cahill Road, serve some apartments, and go to Normandale Lakes area of Northern Bloomington, uh, offices and apartments there. And that'll be the 540 serving that distribution function on the north side of 494 and over uh, east and west. Now south side of 494, Route 535 takes people to Penn Avenue and American area and it takes people uh, sometimes over by uh, Knox and also 82nd Street. Well, we replace that in this by emphasizing transfers with the Orange Line and Route 538 shown in light blue, Southdale, York, Southtown area, Knox Avenue, then 82nd Street and over to the Mall of America, across town. It's the same service and pretty much the same route. Uh, today, it's a good 30 minute frequency, 30 alternating 60 minute weekday. If we can invest more resources, we'd like to look at making this route run every 30 minutes straight through the middle of the day for more convenient connections. But the big change really here to help distribute riders and connect with the Orange Line is Route 542. Route 542 shown in yellow is revived. It's currently suspended now, but it would be revived as a direct American Boulevard crosstown. America, Mall of America, straight on American. No longer jogging up to 76th Street between Lindale and Penn, the route would stay on American, serve the Knox American Station by Southtown, and continue directly west on American Boulevard. Now, because it's faster getting by Southtown this way, we don't have to end the route at Normandale Lake Boulevard like we used to. The route will uh, be easy to extend farther west and serve an unmet need, office buildings and such along 78th Street north of I-494. And that takes us right up to the limits of our service area at Highway 169. West of there is Southwest Metro or Southwest Transit. And Southwest Transit and our group have been in discussions about how we might take advantage of Route 542 as a way to get people to and from the Golden Triangle. Uh, that might be a possibility. 
So the Route 542 is a basic rush hour only connect, connection in the basic plan, but with the higher investment scenario, it would have some of the most significant improvements of any route in our plan. It would have service all day long, uh, evenings and weekends at it. And that's basically the area around 494. The next slide, please, will show us what's happening in 98th Street. This is probably some of the most significant rearrangement of bus service in the concept plan. Route 535, at least on weekday, at least during the school year, weekday service has done a lot of business at Normandale Community College. It's almost two miles west of 35W. Uh, we have 100 people during the school year, historically, that have uh, gotten on the bus there and taken Route 535 home or gone out to school. Well, the orange lines on 35W. So we know one of our most crucial needs is for a direct connection and a frequent one between 98th Street Station and the Orange Line and Normandale College. So to do that, we're proposing to redesign the Route 539 98th Street Crosstown. The eastern end of it over by Mall of America is the same. But when you get to 98th Street Station and go west of 35W, the route's completely changed to go directly on 98th Street, straight to Normandale Community College as directly as possible, and then on out to Normandale Village, near Normandale Boulevard, where there's the shopping center and quite a lot of uh, apartment housing, much of it affordable. The 539 would be upgraded to run every 30 minutes uh, on weekends, 30 and 60 minutes at least. It would run every 20 minutes in the morning rush hour, so we make as good connections as we can and time again very carefully with the orange line. Uh, to make sure that people can easily get to and from all those points, including the college. Now, Route 539 does quite a lot of business on Old Shakopee Road West and France Avenue and by the Valley West Center. It also serves 90th Street, Penn Avenue, and up uh, Penn on your south town, shown in the light purple. Well, if we're not serving that with Route 539, we design a replacement service called Route 536. 536 shown in blue would start at the American Boulevard station area by Southtown, come down Penn Avenue, go straight to where most of the riders are, Old Shockby Road, serve the apartment buildings up 108th and then up through Valley West Center and run as far as Normandale Community College. This route would run every 30 minutes, some 60 minute frequency in the off peak, about the same uh, time frames on weekdays and weekends that the 539 does today. And that takes care of serving most of the needs. The, uh, some of the impacts uh, we know of concern are that we know there's riders in West Old Shakopee Road that ride the current route over to East Old Shakopee Road in the Mall of America. And they would have to transfer now between the 536 and 539, either at Penn and 98th or at Normandale Community College. And we're gonna look very closely at those timings to watch, uh, make those connections as good as we possibly can. Uh, the Route 537, lastly, is not operating now. It's suspended. Uh, it was weekday only service once an hour. Uh, it would serve uh, the purpose it had before, again, under our higher investment scenario, where it'd be restored to a 30-minute rush hour and 60-minute midday service. The north end is at Southdale, the south end at Valley West Center, and it serves Normandale College. Route 537 is something to watch. If we can do it, it has certain advantages. We know there are riders who live near uh, 90th Street and France Avenue, all along 90th Street. There's about nine or 10 people. Most of them are walking distance from Penn Avenue, but there's a good number that are over right near France Avenue. And it's an impact and a concern if we don't have Route 537 because they would be without any regular route service. If Route 537 is operating, they at least have that uh, option for access again. And that's really all that's happening with 98th Street in the middle of Bloomington and the concept plan to replace service and to uh, work with the Orange Line. There's one more slide for detailed service changes. And that's this one. Southwest Bloomington, where the Southwest Bloomington employers are out along Old Shockpea Road, and the residential areas around it, including uh, West 110th and 102nd, are today served by Route 597 commuter express service and rush hours on weekdays. 
uh, Route 597 would be replaced completely in the concept plan with the orange line between 98th Street and downtown Minneapolis. Now the orange line again will be running every 10 minutes in the rush hours, 15 minute service in the day with the 60 foot large articulated buses all day. Uh, the travel time between 98th Street and downtown uh, is a, about four or five minutes slower, we estimate, than the 597, largely because the rough orange line is making some intermediate stops, uh, but the frequency is good. The Route 597 has uh, riders on West Old Shakopee Road and 110th. Now, we replaced this in the concept with Route 547, which would operate a good broad span in the morning peak in the afternoon rush hours every 30 minutes. Buses would always start at 98th Street Station. Say in the morning, then we go west on Old Shakopee Road, straight out to Nesbitt Avenue and through the Southwest Bloomington employment area. And we're making a route change on Hampshire to go up to 105th Street, where Quality Bike Products and a number of other employers are serving all the employers we can in Southwest Bloomington. The bus would continue running in the morning out of 106th Street, Bloomington Ferry Road and Auto Club, picking up residents, also along 110th, and bring people in on Old Shakopee Road 298th Street Station for connections with the Orange Line and other routes. This large loop in effect would reverse in the afternoon rush hours. Buses would start at 98th Street, take people home along 110th Auto Club Road, etc., and then begin picking up people getting off day shifts at the Southwest Bloomington employment areas uh, and jobs and bring them back to connections at 98th Street. And uh, this route would be enhanced under our higher investment scenario as needed based on what employers in Southwest Bloomington area tell us their needs are for second shifts, whatever shifts they have. And then we'd do as much as we could to serve those needs. The uh, other route is the 597B 102nd Street branch is replaced by Route 548, which is a little bit different route than the current routing of the 597. It would start at Highland Greens Drive, which is a new routing by apartment buildings in Briar Road. It would come in on 102nd Street, like the current route, but instead of going up to 98th Street, it would stay directly on 102nd to Old Shakopee Road and directly over to 98th Street Station. We're doing that uh, recommendation because we have this good crosstown service on 98th Street to uh, take care of that area. This would be a 30 minute frequency service going east in the morning rush hour, west in the afternoon rush hours. We have a concept plan worked out now. And that is our, all of our service descriptions for the uh, details uh, of what we have in our concept plan for the Orange Line Connecting Bus Service. Let's see, next slide. Okay, there's one other thing I want to mention here quickly as I can. The uh, federal government rightly asks us to consider equity when we look at our service plans. And one way they ask us to do that is to look at concentrations of uh, minorities, as they call them, uh, black, indigenous, people of color, or BIPOC, as we tend to call them here, on one hand, and low-income groups on the other in areas. The map on the left, blue, shows each dot being 50 people, shows where the uh, concentrations of BIPOC or minority populations are within quarter mile of walking distance of bus routes uh, that can get you to the orange line. And you see prior, uh, a priority area of, uh, is Lake Street and the Phillips neighborhood in South Minneapolis near the top of the map, and some concentrations in Richfield and East Bloomington notably. Uh, the east map, or the right map, shows us uh, the low income concentrations, and there's a similarity in the distribution. And this is part of the story and it helps us understand how we're covering people's needs. Now, if we look at the next slide, uh, the Federal Transit Administration, or FTA, asks us to look at what's called Title VI equity, which is basically, are we providing uh, appropriate benefit for people uh, who have lower incomes or minority groups, uh, as opposed to white or more affluent people or uh, people that uh, presumably are less in need of transit for the access to jobs. At least that's the thought. Uh, every metro area in the 
United States can set its own thresholds of where they consider that disparate impact happens. In the Twin Cities, we say 80%. We say if, if the benefit is uh, to minorities or low-income groups, is at least 80% of what it is for everybody else, uh, you are not creating any issues of a disparate impact or unfair or uh, inequitable service. Well, because we're, the map on the right shows where we're increasing trips. Uh, and the biggest increase in weekly scheduled trips in our concept plan is shown in green. So around the Orange Line stations, you see green areas, uh, of course, because there's the added Orange Line trips in walking distance of Lake Street, 46th Street, 66th Street. We are uh, improving access in the terms of the number of trips down in Southwest Bloomington and near 98th Street, parts uh, of uh, American Boulevard and areas along 494. Well, uh, we're making changes that are good for uh, everybody. And we're right at our threshold of about 80% in terms of benefits for uh, non-minorities or the benefits that low-income people versus higher-income people are re receiving. Uh, these improvements is, are for the higher investment scenario where some of the suspended routes are returning. So there's certain cases where routes 100% better just because of the post-pandemic plan. Well, that tends to distort the numbers. Just looking at access, we think that perhaps the service plan is benefiting higher income areas more. But there's another side of the story that's very important. And if we look at the next slide, I think we'll see it. The Orange Line plan is as much about getting people to suburban jobs and uh, education opportunities as it is about anything. And uh, the maps here, one on the left for the midday, or excuse me, the AM rush hour, and the one on the right for the midday off peak, is showing in terms of uh, jobs that can be accessed within 45 minutes. And is there an increase in that number of those jobs that are easier to reach? And with the orange line and connecting bus service, as we conceive of it now, the uh, dark green shows that there's areas in Bloomington, Southwest, and along 494, and in Burnsville too, that show a real increase in the number of jobs that you can get to within 45 minutes. And that's true in the morning peak. There's even more areas where that's true in the midday. So if we're really targeting part-time workers and those that might start or end their shifts in the midday, that's a good sign. This data helps balance the other maps which show uh, the increase in service to areas that aren't necessarily low income or uh, minority populations. So it's generally a good news story about access to jobs. Next slide, please. And we don't have to stop there. We can also look at who are these people gaining access as shown on the last map? Well, the existing services in light gray, sort of our base, and this is how many people are accessed within, can access jobs within 45 minutes. And the upper half of the chart is the morning peak. The south half of the chart is, the bottom part of the chart is the midday. And it shows that with the concept plan, we have uh, BIPOC populations gaining more access than other groups proportionally speaking, and the same is true for low income groups, whereas higher income people have just about the same, same situation today or in future. So that helps to show who's benefiting from the concept plan uh, for access to jobs. Next slide, please. And now it's the next time for the next steps and the timeline and what we're going to do. So I think at this point, I turn this over to Juan to take it from here. Thank you. Thanks, John, uh, for that very thorough look at the concept plan and some of the impacts to jobs in the area. So we're at a really important time for the Connecting Bus Study project and the concept plan. Um, we're in our outreach and engagement phase where we're seeking uh, input on these proposals and our comment period, it lasts through February 22nd. Um, we will take all of our input that we receive to inform our plan revision this spring in March and April. Um, and we will 
come back to the public with a recommended plan uh, for for these bus routes. And we will bring our plan to the Metropolitan Council for final plan approval in the summer, June of 2021. And then looking to implement these changes late 2021 to coincide with the opening of the Metro Orange Line. So um, as I mentioned, we're at a really important time where we're seeking your input on these proposals that John described. Um, due to the pandemic, a lot of our outreach activity has shifted online, where on our project webpage, we've posted our concept plan report, a video presentation, and a map-based survey. Um, we're also reaching out to our customers at bus stops to let them know about these changes and to inform them about the opportunity to provide input via the survey. We've sent direct mailers to people in segments, people who live in these segments where they will see uh, changes from these proposals. We've also worked with local ethnic media and ethnic media to promote uh, this comment period and We've been hosting virtual meetings and partnering with organizations like Commuter Services to host these types of meetings and, you know, work with key stakeholders, um, you know, like the school districts, community college and employers. So um, really want to encourage you to uh, visit our webpage, metrotransit.org slash OLCB for more information. You can also reach us via email at service.development at metrotransit.org. And our survey, uh, which includes a lot of the materials and maps here to help uh, guide the questioning at surveymonkey.com slash r slash ol connecting bus. Or you can simply use your phone's camera to scan this QR code and it'll take you right to the survey. So as a reminder, I wanna uh, let you know that the comment period ends February 22nd. Um, and with that, that concludes our presentation segment. And um, maybe I'll ask Kate to see if we have any questions from, uh, from, from our attendees. All right, thanks so much, um, Juan and John. Just lots of great information, lots of detail. Um, it's always amazing how much planning and, and detail goes into these routes. So. So we do have some questions and I will read those. Um, first question, does the tunnel also allow for bicyclists? I think she means the tunnel um, at Knox Avenue. Yeah, let me, I'm gonna pull up that image that we have back here um, because right. yes, the Knox Avenue Transit Way um, tunnel does have on this east side of the underpass, there's a 10 foot trail for bicyclists and pedestrians that connects over here to the Lucky's area and also to, to Knox on the north side of uh, 494. So yeah, you can use your bike to, to use this trail and get underneath 494 for another connection across the interstate. That's great. That's gonna be really nice. Um, next question, right now at the 46th Street Station, the timetables, both electronic and static, at the street and expressway levels are incomplete. Some info at the street level is not at the lower level and vice versa. Can this be avoided at the orange line stops, all timetable static and electronic at both levels? Yeah, um, yes, it can be. And it's what's underway with, for example, our Lake Street station um, that's under construction, there'll be you know real time arrival information at you know, the street level and the freeway level. And our contractor is also working on uh, signage at the 46th Street station to, to update it. So I know, John, if you want to add anything to that. No, okay. Well, not really. I, I think that's something we can take back and ask about. I, I've, I've heard discussions of it being done both ways, what's described and what you're describing. And, uh, the advantage of having all the information at both levels is that you can make a quick reference uh, reference to what you need to catch while you're still at the other level before you head down. Uh, if there's a downside, I suppose it's that you get a lot more to read through in each display. I, I'm thinking of the real time information that keeps changing because you have to go through more routes. But uh, I, can, I can understand the point, you know, about it's, it helps you make some uh, 
good uh, planning on the fly as you make your connections reassures you when your connecting service is coming. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, thanks for that feedback. Um, another question, maybe I missed it, but what's the plan for the future of the Bloomington Transit Station? Noticed it wasn't referred to as such. So that's... Well, the uh, South Bloomington Transit Center, I think is what's referred to there, is staying the official name until the Metro Orange Line opens, at which time it's going to be officially renamed 98th Street Station. Same place, uh, but bigger, because we'll have the new platforms as shown in the photo here on the left of uh, the uh, new Orange Line stops out on the uh, frontage road, 35W. The regular transit center that exists today, you can see on the left of the picture with its shelters, and that'll stay the same. I might add, we're going to redesignate some of the gates in that existing transit center uh, for the new routes was called for in the concept plan as they roll out, you know, depending on refinements, uh, with a real eye to making sure that the routes that we think are making the most critical connections or are going to be used by the most people are closest to the Orange Line platforms. So there will be some, watch for some rearrangement of routes at gates uh, inside the uh, current transit center. Um, but, uh, you know, when I said like 539 is going to be really important to get people to Normandale College, for example. Uh, we'll want that route to be stopping very close to the Orange Line platform, and basically at that shelter you see in the far left edge of the photo okay. to minimize the walk distance between them. Right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, next, next question. Knowing that most people are not commuting or going to school currently, are you concerned that they are not paying attention now, but will largely be impacted by the time it is implemented? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. It is a concern and we've uh, worked and reached out to school districts, uh, charter schools, community college in the service area to, to inform, um, share these updates and seek feedback. Um, so we've, you know, reached out in that manner and, uh, we've had responses and met with, you know, leadership and with some of these organizations. And I think they are excited generally about some of these proposals, but I think it does remain a concern for, you know, perhaps we missed some people during, you know, due to the pandemic and due to folks not using transit as much right now. Mm -hmm. And we, and commuter services works with, with Metro Transit to get the word out too. And, and we'll keep on doing that. Um, so thank you. So last question, it looks like, um, is from the staff person from Quality Bicycle Products. So that's the South Bloomington area. Uh, he says, really encourage and appreciate the exploration of midday route availability. In my workplace, the manual labor warehouse employees, lower income and BIPOC are far more likely to have start and end times outside of rush hour. Midday is very much needed for these users. People most likely to have rush hour start and end times are the most likely not to be working remotely going forward doing during and post pandemic are the most likely to be working remotely. So um, bus routes will need to account for walk time and need to be at work and ready before the top of the hour. For example, if you're scheduled to work at 9 a.m. riders will need approximately 20 minutes you know, an 8.40 drop-off time on the bus to make the 9 a.m. start. So that is, that's his comment. John, I may ask yeah. you to feel that one. Well, that's, that's very good information. And it's the kind of thing that I really need to design, or at least try to design schedules that work well for employers. Uh, it's valuable information to have. The basic plan for the 547 is weekday peak periods, say roughly 6 to 9 a.m. start times and uh, roughly 3 to 6 p.m. work ends. Um, but if there is a key time that isn't covered in that range, certainly want to hear about them, how many people we're talking about on that shift and uh, see what we 
can do. I can't promise at this point, but it certainly makes sense to to serve employers, especially such engaged employers as quality bike products that really want to work to promote the transit service and communicate it well to their to their uh, employees. Uh, there is one other thing I'll add, though, that um, that we have run into in uh, industrial parks and areas that are non-telecommute territory. Uh, some employers have uh, unscheduled uh, last-minute overtime uh, day by day. Uh, they all, everyone starts at a strict start time. Need plenty of time to get set up, like you say, but. The actual ending time of the shift varies depending on how much work there is to do. And it depends on the employer, of course. But it's not unheard of that uh, they'll say they get done at 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, that are today we're working until 3.45. And we didn't really know much that we'd need to do that yesterday or we didn't know for sure. Well, sometimes it can be another bus trip that you can fall back on, and that's great. But for second shifts or, or shifts that are in the off-peak at any time, it becomes much harder to have a bus service that'll be there. In cases like that, I'd ask that employers please consider organizing carpools uh, to uh, sort of as a safety valve to help employees who have been coming by bus to get back to the transit station after work if we're working later than normal tonight. Uh, with the help of their trusted co-workers uh, who might very well be going near that transit station en route to home anyway. So for instance, if uh, the Route 547 was not running quite late enough, but tonight we had a shift go late, uh, if the carpools could be ready and organized ahead of time to get me back to 98th Street Station uh, to complement uh, the 547 then is or isn't available, uh, that means I can ride the bus. Right. So uh, I think it's a partnership question and it's something that we, we have had to deal with in some uh, suburban off uh, industrial parks because of the nature of the work. And I, that may or may not apply for an employer who's interested, but uh, I just want to throw that out there as something we have to uh, consider because we can never have service that's timed every half hour all day long in areas that are more specialized like this, or, you know, where there isn't a lot of residential population density, things like that. So uh, thank you for considering, and thanks for the good specific information about your needs, the quality bikes, quality thank bike product. You. Thanks, John. Yeah, and really good point about carpools and van pools and commuter services, um, you know, does outreach, and we do talk about those options as well, because as you say, you can't have enough service for those situations where there's unscheduled overtime. So, and I'll touch base on that in just a minute about some of our resources. So looks like that was the last question. So I'm going to then start sharing my slide and we'll, we'll wrap up. I'll just share some resources about commuter services. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. Okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna um, briefly review some, some resources that Commuter Services provides and some in partnership with Metro Transit. Um, after talking about bus service, um, these are good things to keep in mind for employers and for commuters as well, especially as we start, you know, as more companies start going back to the work site. So the Metro Pass Bus Pass program offers a deeply discounted transit pass that's good for unlimited rides on all buses and trains in the system. Um, employees access it through their employer and commuter services helps enroll the company and then as an ongoing um, helps with ongoing promotion to their workforce. Um, we have a wealth of resources for for telework to help companies start or expand a telework program like sample policies, implementation guidance, and home office and ergonomic guidelines. We provide free signs and we manage pre preferential carpool and van pool parking for companies. We take care of the application process and parking permit issuance and we provide a list of active carpoolers for each employer. Um, any company in the metro area who's willing to promote sustainable commuting 
to their workforce will is able to get a free starter bike rack. Um, it holds six bikes. Um, it can be placed outdoors or or indoors in a secure area and you can reach out to commuter services if you're interested. Um, and then we also coordinate bike to work events like bike safety checks and bike commuting classes. When COVID hit, we moved classes online. We actually have a couple of webinars. One is just about bike commuting basics for someone who's never biked to work or maybe they've just tried it once or twice. Um, and then the other is in extending your season. So it's really good tips about if you're ready to think about biking in more varied weather, colder, even winter, um, snow, um, how to how dress, you know, how to make that feasible so it's a good experience. So we have those webinars on our YouTube channel. Let's see here. So for our commuter resources, we partner with Metro Transit and we provide a customized transit itinerary plus a couple of free ride passes that will give step-by-step -step instructions on how you get from home to work, um, where the transfers are, where the bus stops are. It can be very useful. Um, we wanna let people know about the transit assistance program. Um, it's designed to make public transit more affordable for low income residents. Uh, TAP provides a reduced fare pass that goes on a go-to card. It allows customers to use a bus or train for just $1 per ride. And we have information about that that you can share with your employees or if you're interested as an individual, we're happy to provide that. Um, we also facilitate carpools and van pools where we help people find others who have a similar commute and schedule. We also have some tips on how to set up a successful carpool and van pool arrangement. Um, and there's more about the Vample program. I'm happy to go into if it, anyone's interested in that. Um, we have bike to work materials like maps and safety tips and um, how to put your bike on the bus and train. Um, we also have an updated summary of all of the bike trails that are under construction. So that's sort of an ongoing process where bike trails are closed or there's a detour. So we keep up to date so you don't have to and we put everything all in one spot and you can sign up to receive those bike trail updates from commuter services. Um, we have a newsletter for commuters that goes out once a month that has the latest on commute programs, construction, transit projects, lots of good information. Um, the Guaranteed Ride Home program is free to any commuter who is not driving alone using any combination of sustainable ways of getting to work three days a week. It provides a nice safety net um, reimbursement for taxi fare or Uber Lyft to get home in those situations where you have an unexpected schedule change or you have to get home to a sick child. It lets you do that and get reimbursed pretty quickly. And it's a program of Metro Transit. So we have an upcoming webinar, part of our Twin Cities Telework webinar series. Um, this is something that's newer for commuter services and, and we've done one webinar and we have one coming up and then we'll have continuing on um, after that. So the next telework webinar is telework during COVID-19 lessons learned over the past nine months. Um, we also have a website launching soon, tctelework.com. So stay tuned for that. We'll get the word out when that's up and running and that will house lots of great information about um, resources for commuters and for for employers all about telework and the latest trends and and the latest information and this is my contact information so please feel free to contact me with any questions or just discuss anything that you've heard today um, and I am not seeing any new questions in our in our Q&A. So I think we are able to wrap up and I just wanna finish with thanking both John Dillery and Juan Renhel for Metro Transit for your time and all your great information. We really appreciate it where we were very happy to get all this great detail out to our commuters and our employers. So thank you again and have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Kate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank Bye. you.